Well, over the past year, Pippa Bradshaw has regularly checked in on the recovery progress. From a town underwater to a muddy mess, then there were those defining images of the clean-up. And Pippa joins me from the main street of Lismore. Pip, you've spoken to so many locals over the past year. They know floods, they've lived through floods, but nothing like this. Yeah, that's right, Ali. This record flood really changed the town here forever. There's so many who are still fighting to restore their lives, their homes and businesses. Some want out, but so many others, Ali, still want to live in this place that they love and call home. Tonight, we've revisited some of the people we met 12 months ago to see how they're coping one year on. It is a little sad when you pop your head out the window and see half the CBD is still empty. It was destruction on a catastrophic scale. Millions of dollars in stock thrown out on the street, piled metres high as lives and livelihoods sat in ruin. Kerry Horner's toy store was directly in the line of fire. What was it like inside your store after the floods came through? Uh, war zone. Ceilings, lights, Everything was dangling and hanging and soggy mess of boxes and toys. Now, 12 months on, the mud and sludge have been replaced with a kaleidoscope of colour, a little pocket of hope on Lismore's main street. I'm feeling optimistic about what lies ahead for Lismore. We, we've come back, um, took us six months to get back. The longest six months of Kerry's life. But while they're back in business, you don't have to look too far to see the damage that was done. Yeah, they were pretty tough physically and, and mentally. Just day in, day out, cleaning, painting, repainting because the paint wouldn't hold. Kerry had been through floods before, but none like this. In preparation, he'd lifted his stock above the expected flood height. No one anticipated it going two metres higher than that. What is your safe zone now? Um, it is kind of get out, not up. So, yeah, you can see there's still heaps to do upstairs. Yeah, wow, this is very much a work in progress, isn't it? Yes. We will just step by step get through it. You bought this building thinking it was flood safe? Yeah, I did think having an upstairs was an advantage for, for floods, but um, after that big one, what not fun? anymore. And the next inevitable flood is always on his mind. I worry probably every day. I look at weather apps every day. Um, you look at low pressure systems forming out at sea and you just wonder, OK, it's time to start prepping. Pretty nervous. I've put everything that I have into it. Um, yeah, so there's a lot riding on it. Amongst the closed shop fronts, you'll find Brendan Thurgate's Dark Horse Espresso, a new business in the CBD after the one Brendan managed pre-floods didn't reopen. So I could see the need for the community to have somewhere to go, um, somewhere to meet um, and just a little bit of normal. A caffeine hit for weary locals which is helping revitalise a CBD written off by many last year. How do you prepare yourself for the next flood? Um, absolutely everything in my shop is removable. Um, even down to a hot water system. Just a few streets from the CBD, there's still so many reminders of what happened here 12 months ago. For every person who's back in their home, there's twice as many who aren't. Homes which have been abandoned, frozen in time since the big flood. I mean, the back neighbours have just sold up as well. You know, uh, the corner one here's just sold. Yeah, all along the street. I mean, at the moment, it's about one third full. Glenn Lewis is still living in a caravan at the front of his flood wrecked home. I can't go through it again. No, it's terrifying, you know. Glenn is now planning to move to Melbourne, an oasis he dreams of every day. <laughs> Surprisingly, Glenn considers himself Come one on. of the lucky ones Go. who had insurance. 
but he's waiting on a payout which he says was approved four months ago. Yeah, I've been successful with the insurance company, but they just dragged their feet and I they're mean, trying. I mean, you've to... been successful, but 12 months on, you're living in a van and this is your home. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm sure this isn't how you thought you'd spend your retirement. No, no, not at all. But, you know, you've got to live with it and you've got to go on with it. What else can you do, you know? He's mm. just had to reinsure his house until he can sell it for double what his old premium was. I'm on domain every day, you know, <laughs> dreaming about a place in, you know, uh, that's 1,700 kilometres away. But for those who have stayed in Lismore, it's a testament to their determination to get through the toughest of years. I still don't know about my insurance. Um, I'm not covered for flood. People like Alicia Fergus. These are for you, a little thank housewarming you. gift. They're beautiful. And to say thank you for letting us into your home for the past year. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's been a long year, hasn't it? I'm in, kids are in, animals are in. Yeah, that's all. it's home again. Do you want to come in? Absolutely. Let's have a look. This is the fourth time a current affair has visited the mum of two. It's a different journey, but it is good to be in a home and my home um, and to have that safe zone for the kids and animals, have my animals around me again. <laughs> Nearly everything you see in the home was donated after the flood destroyed all the family's possessions. Humbling. It's really beautiful. You don't realise how much support is out there around you. A home rebuilt without insurance, with the love and support of an entire community. I now know how to build drawers. <laughs> <laughs> you said it was a flat pack, but yeah. never again. Yeah, I'd never do a flat pack again, but I've done the experience now. Um, but affordability and time-wise and things. Like so many others, it's impossible for Alicia to forget what Lismore went through, but it's a new benchmark for just how strong this community is. Well, you've just got to keep going, don't you, really? Um, yeah, you know, I want to try and put a positive reflection on, on what's happened around me for my children um, and show them that, you know, whatever life throws at you, you get back up and march on through and keep going. Here with Brian Johnson from the Lismore Lions Club with the whole team behind him. Nice to see you all. So you're there doing all the hard work. Brian's up the front talking to me. <laughs> but mate, I tell you what, in moments like this, you guys always step up and boy, the community's needed you this past 12 months. Yeah, certainly. That, that, that's what we do. We're, we're the Lions Club. When there's a need out in the community, we're there. So uh, mm. we're happy to be here today and doing what we can. Uh, for this community, yep. How different is the town today to, to even go back 12 months ago and, you know, people were losing everything and there's a desperation that comes with that, isn't there? Oh, there certainly is and you, you drive around this place and there's still a, a mess in this, this town. Um, we're down and, but not out, we're uh, fighting back uh, but there is a lot of work to uh, be done and I, I think days like today are good because we want to keep we want to keep Lismore in focus and keep getting done whatever we can get done in this place. So I know that 12 months ago, one of the things that people really needed were things like white goods and all. Now that we've moved on, what do you need right now? What, what we're seeing, we started off with uh, just what we considered were essential items like beds and mattresses, refrigerators and washing machines. We, we've moved past that now because we know there is a different need out in the community. So we're doing things like wardrobes, tall boys. I mean, we've heard stories where people are back in their homes, they have a washing machine in the fridge, but their clothes are hanging on a piece of wire from one side of the room to the other. So, so that's what we're into at the moment. We're trying to... Uh, dining room suites, lounge suites, all that sort all of thing. All that sort of stuff. Yep. You guys do amazing work, thank you, but um, they'll get cranky with me behind you if you don't get back on the barbie, all right, oh, okay. mate? Very they'll good. put you back to work. Because I'll tell you who's here waiting for some sausages. We've got, I reckon, half the staff of Coles. Yay! Give everyone away. Yay! Now, I did get to have a chat to you before, Karen. Tell me, how many people did you have in your house the night of the floods a year yeah, ago? Yeah, get us proud. Well done, mate. <laughs> It's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Um, but we've done our best to stick together and um, I guess that's what um, communities do. Like, we stuck together and held out to the next morning until we got rescued, so yeah. Still emotional about it. Yeah. Talk me through that. Oh, I guess it's a bittersweet, like, just seeing the water come through your house is pretty intense mm -hmm. and... Um, 
but we'll, I guess we were lucky because we had all the neighbours with us and um, when we did wake up the next morning and looked at the water it was a really surreal feeling like it was um, we could see the other neighbours houses and you couldn't see much of them left so it was a bit but everyone yeah. was safe right that's and right, Anna that's 12 months thing. on no. you're not back in your house no still in the front yard in the caravan and how's that pretty rough at times mm. yeah especially with the heat and that the all the wildlife and yep. yeah but you've got a good community around you and good a lot community. of people who care yeah and guess what stay with us because when we come back after the break we have a really big surprise you don't want to miss it. We're going to be back in just a moment. Welcome back. Well, as Mayor Steve Krieg said a little earlier, this town will be OK, but they still need plenty of financial support. So we asked our mates at Coles to come to the party. And Lismore store manager Cheryl joins me now. Cheryl, I think I should point out to everyone that when the floods came through, your store, which is just behind us, also went underwater. And it was tough for you and a lot of your staff. It, it was. So we, we had 17 team members that lost everything. Um, but we also lost our entire store, so the team for four months were separated. We were in four of our sister stores, um, and we just we weren't together anymore. So it was it was a tough time. Um, and then we uh, we started trading out of a tent in a car park just over there where we did our first ever pop up shop. Mm. Um, Does it feel <laughs> surreal now, thinking back to in those in those early days of how you got through when you you fed this town? It, it is surreal, um, and some days it does just feel we're back to normal. Mm. And then, you know, one of the team will come up and say, the plasterboard's been delivered, the walls are going in tomorrow, and you mm. realise there's a long time before Lismore's going to be normal again. Mm. But it's getting there, isn't we're it? We're getting there. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. Well, we asked Brian to come back for a moment. Now, Brian, you don't know this, but Cheryl has a surprise for you. Come on oh, in. Oh, wow. Do. <laughs> Cheryl? So, um, we heard earlier on some of the awesome uh, work you do, and on behalf of Coles, we would like to donate fifty thousand dollars to the Lions Club. Wow! Woo! Thank you very what do we think of that? Thank you very much. That is that is very good news. <laughs> and certainly a surprise. Uh, one thing: when you give money to the Lions Club, you know that every single cent goes mm -hmm. to where it's supposed to be going. So the the people of Lismore will be receiving this money and uh, we'll be putting it to good use with goods and those sorts of things. How does it feel to hold that cheque in your hand? Very good. <laughs> We've had $200,000 donated so far from mm. clubs all around Australia, individuals, community groups. So this gets us up to $250,000, so wonderful, mm. wonderful news. Is it nice to know that that money's going to go back into rebuilding your community, Cheryl? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Just to go back to the community of Lismore, it means mm. so much to all of us here at Coles. All right. Is it a wonderful community, guys? Yes. Yes. Do we love it? And it's been so great to be with you here tonight and to, to mark one year since that, that terrible, terrible night. But it is a town which is strong. It's extraordinary and it's got people like you and so I think it's going to be okay. Yep. We Thank hope so. you guys. Yep. Thank you so much. Well, We've got to finish up now because I believe my shift on the Barbie starts. <laughs> I'm Ali Langdon. Thank you so much for your company. And tomorrow night, I'm heading your way, Melbourne. A very good night from all of us. Woo!